April 3, 1914. It seems to me that I am being born into a new life and that all the methods and habits of the past can no longer be of any use. It seems to me that what was once a result is now only a preparation. I feel as if I had done nothing yet, as if I had not lived the spiritual life, as if I was only entering upon the way which leads to it. It seems to me that I know nothing, that I am incapable of formulating anything, that all experience is yet to commence. It is as if I was stripped of all my past, of my errors as well as my conquests, as if all that had disappeared to give place to one newborn whose whole existence has yet to take shape, who has no karma, no experience it can profit by, but no error either which it must repair. My head is empty of all knowledge and all certitude, but also of all vain thought. I feel that if I can surrender without any resistance to this state, if I do not strive to know or understand, if I consent to be completely like a child, ignorant and candid, some new possibility will open before me. I know that I must now definitively give myself up and be like a page absolutely blank on which thy thought, thy will, O Lord, will be able to inscribe themselves freely, secure against all deformation. An immense gratitude rises from my heart, I seem to have at last arrived at the threshold which I have so long sought. Grant, O Lord, that I may be pure enough, impersonal enough, animated enough with thy divine love, to be able to cross it definitively. O, oh, to belong to thee, without any darkness of restriction. April 4, 1914. O oh Lord, my adoration rises ardently towards thee, all my being is like an aspiration, a flame which is consecrated to thee. O oh Lord, Lord, my sweet master, it is thou who livest and wiliest in me. This body is thy instrument. This will is thy servant. This intelligence is thy tool. And the whole is only thyself. April 7, 1914. What is then my courage if I always try to avoid the fight? What is then my energy if I am instinctively afraid of the new effort to be made and try, without being aware of it, to go to sleep passively, counting upon the results of the past effort? To act I have to be compelled and my mute contemplation is partly made of laziness, all that appears to me more and more clearly. All I have done up to the present seems to me to be nothing. The poverty and limitation of the instrument which I put at thy service, O Lord, are evident to me, and I laugh a little sorrowfully at the idea that I could sometimes have a good opinion of my being, of its efforts and their results. This threshold of the true life which I am always thinking that I have attained is like a hope which is given to me but never a tangible realization. It is the toy promised to a child, the reward held out before the weak. When then shall I be a truly strong being entirely made of courage, energy, valor and calm perseverance? When shall I have forgotten my personality completely enough to be only an instrument solely molded by the forces it has to manifest? When will there be no inertia mixed with my consciousness of unity? When with my feeling of divine love will there be no longer mixed any weakness? O oh Lord, all thought seems dead in me, now that I have put these questions. I search for my conscious mind and find it no more. I search for my individuality and discover it nowhere. I search for my personal will and it is absent. I search for thee and there is no word from thee. Silence, only silence. I seem now to hear thy voice, never hast thou been able to die integrally. Always something in thee has wished to know, to see, to understand. Surrender completely, learn how to disappear, break the last dam which separates thee from me. Accomplish without reserve thy act of surrender, alas, O Lord, for a long time I have wanted to do it, but I have not been able. Now wilt thou give me the power to do it? O Lord, my sweet eternal master, break this resistance which fills me with anguish, deliver me from myself. April 8, 1914. O Lord, my thought is peaceful and my heart is at rest. I turn towards thee with a deep devotion and limitless confidence. I know that thy love is all-powerful and that thy justice will reign upon the earth. 
I know that the hour is near when the last veil will be withdrawn and all iniquity disappear to give place to an era of peace and harmonious effort. O Lord, my mind drawn inward and my heart at peace approach Thee and all my being is filled with Thy divine presence. Grant that I may see only Thee in everything and that all may shine with Thy divine light. O, oh, may hatreds be appeased, rancors effaced, fears dispelled, suspicions abolished and malevolences overcome, and in this town, in this country, on this earth, may all hearts feel vibrating in them this sublime love, the source of all transfiguration. O Lord, with what an ardent appeal I implore thy love. Grant that my aspiration may be intense enough to awaken everywhere a like aspiration, O, oh, may kindness, justice, peace reign as sovereign masters, may ignorant egoism be overcome, may darkness be suddenly illumined by thy pure light. May the blind see, may the deaf hear, may thy law be proclaimed in every place and, in a union constantly progressive, in a harmony ever more perfect, may all, as a single being, stretch out their arms towards thee to identify themselves with thee and to manifest thee upon the earth. O Lord, with the mind drawn inward and the heart full of sunlight, I give myself to thee without reserve and the I disappears in thee. April 10, 1914. Suddenly the veil was rent, the horizon was disclosed. Before the clear vision my whole being threw itself at thy feet in a great outburst of gratitude. Yet in spite of this deep and integral joy, all was calm, all was peaceful with the peace of eternity. I seem to have no more limits. There is no longer the perception of the body, no sensations, no feelings, no thoughts. A clear, pure, tranquil immensity, penetrated with love and light, filled with an unspeakable beatitude, is all that is there, and that alone seems now to be myself, and this, myself, is so little the former, I, selfish and limited, that I cannot tell if it is I or thou, O Lord, sublime master of our destinies. It is as though all were energy, courage, force, will, infinite sweetness, incomparable compassion. Even more forcibly than during these last days the past is dead and as though buried under the rays of a new life. The last glance that I have just thrown backward, as I read a few pages of this book, definitively convinced me of this death, and lightened of a great weight, I present myself before thee, O my divine master, with all the simplicity, all the nudity of a child, and still the only thing I perceive is that calm and pure immensity. Lord, thou hast answered my prayer, thou hast granted me what I have asked from thee. The I has disappeared, there is only a docile instrument put at thy service, a center of concentration and manifestation of thy infinite and eternal rays. Thou hast taken my life and made it thine. Thou hast taken my will and hast united it to thine. Thou hast taken my love and identified it with thine. Thou hast taken my thought and replaced it by thy absolute consciousness. The body, marveling, bows its forehead in the dust in mute and submissive adoration. And nothing else exists but thou alone in the splendor of thy immutable peace. Karakal, April 13, 1914. All conspires to prevent me from remaining a being of habits, and in this new state, in the midst of these complex and unstable circumstances, I have never so completely lived thy mutable peace, or rather the I has never so completely disappeared leaving thy divine peace to live alone. All is beautiful, harmonious and calm, all is full of thee. Thou shinest in the dazzling sun, thou makest thyself felt in the sweet breeze that blows, thou makest thyself manifest in our hearts and livest in all beings. There is no animal, no plant that does not speak to me of thee and thy name is written on all I look at. O my sweet Lord, hast thou at last granted that I should be wholly thine and my consciousness definitively united with thine? What have I done to merit so glorious a happiness? Nothing more than to desire it and will it with constancy, that is very little. But, O Lord, since now it is thy will and not mine that lives in me, Thou canst make this happiness profitable to all and make its reason of existence the giving to the greatest possible number of beings a perception of thee. O may all know thee, love thee, serve thee. May all receive the supreme consecration.
O oh love, divine love, spread in the world, regenerate life, enlighten the intelligence, break down the dams of egoism, dispel the obstacle of ignorance and be the resplendent master of the earth. Pondicherry, April 17, 1914. O oh Lord, O oh Almighty Master, Sole Reality, grant that no error, no obscurity, no fatal ignorance may creep into my heart and my thought. In action, the personality is the inevitable and indispensable intermediary of thy will and thy forces. The stronger, the more complex, powerful, individualized and conscious is the personality, the more powerfully and usefully can the instrument serve. But, by reason of the very character of personality, it easily tends to be drawn into the fatal illusion of its separate existence and become little by little a screen between thee and that on which thou wiliest to act. Not at the beginning, in the manifestation, but in the transmission of the return. That is to say, instead of being, as a faithful servant, an intermediary who brings back to thee exactly what is thy due, the forces sent forth in reply to thy action, there is a tendency in the personality to want to keep for itself a part of the forces, with this idea, it is I who have done this or that, I who am thanked. Pernicious illusion, obscure fossid, now are you discovered and unmasked. That is the maleficent canker corroding the fruit of the action, falsifying all its results. O oh Lord, O oh my sweet master, soul reality, dispel this feeling of the I. I have now understood that so long as there will be a manifested universe, the I will remain necessary for thy manifestation. To dissolve, or even to diminish or weaken the I, is to deprive thee of the means of manifestation, in whole or part. But what must be radically and definitively suppressed, is the illusory thought, the illusory feeling, the illusory sensation of the separate I. At no moment, in no circumstances must we forget that our I has no reality outside thee. O oh my sweet master, my divine lord, tear out from my heart this illusion that thy servant may become pure and faithful, and faithfully and integrally bring back to thee all that is thy due. In silence let me contemplate and understand this supreme ignorance and dispel it for ever. Chase the shadow from my heart, and let thy light reign in it, its uncontested sovereign. April 18, 1914. Yesterday evening the last veil was almost rent, the last stronghold of the blind and ignorant personality seemed to be on the point of yielding. For the first time I thought I understood what is true in personal service, and the obstacle which separated me from the integral realization appeared to me very fragile, on the point of definitively disappearing. But the necessity of my outer duties tore me out of this beneficent and happy contemplation, and at the moment when I was obliged to return to the outer consciousness, the veil closed again and appears to me darker than ever. Why this fall into the inconscience of the night after so great a light? O oh Lord, Lord, wilt thou not let me escape at last from the ignorance and be one with thee? Now that I have known and seen so well what must be the work upon the earth, shall I not be able to realize it? Am I then riveted to the ignorance and illusion? Why, why this night after so great and pure a light? All my being is strained in an agonizing appeal. O oh Lord, take pity on me. April 19, 1914. There is a great difference between being active in an external action, even while keeping our thought constantly fixed on thee, and entering into that perfect union with thee which leads to what I have called the absolute consciousness, the true omniscience, the knowledge. When we act, even with our thought fixed on thee, we are like a blind man walking on the road, with a sense of the direction, but knowing nothing of the way he follows and of the precise manner in which he should walk on it so as to avoid neglecting anything. In the other case, on the contrary, there is the clear vision in the full light, the utilization of the smallest opportunity, the plenitude of action, the maximum of result. And if the first attitude is indispensable before attaining to the other, we must not at any moment cease to work, to make an effort to attain to the perfect communion. But my heart is at peace, my thought free from impatience, and I give myself to thy will with the smiling confidence of a child. May thy peace reign over all. April 20, 
1914. After I had hoped so much, after I had come to believe that my outer being was at last to become an instrument adapted to thy ends, after the hope had come of being delivered at last from this ego, so cumbersome and obscure, I feel as far from the goal as before, as ignorant, as egoistic as I was before this great expectation. And once more the way rolls out interminable across the fields of inconscience. The sublime door is again closed and again I find myself on the threshold of the sanctuary without any power to enter. But I have learnt to regard everything smilingly with a tranquil heart. Only I ask thee, O my divine master, not to let me commit errors. Even if the instrument is condemned again for a time to inconscience, grant that it may faithfully and docilely let itself be guided by thy divine law. I salute thee, O Lord, with a profound and pure devotion. O. Oh, be the sovereign master of all hearts. April 23, 1914. All rules have vanished, the regularity of the discipline has disappeared, all effort has ceased. Not by my own will, not, I think, by negligence either, but because the circumstances conspire to make it so. It seems to me that this inner will, always alert, which is like a steersman at the helm, has evaporated or fallen asleep, and my being is only something peacefully surrendered which lets itself be carried by the current. Up to the present, it seems to me that the course has been in a straight line, and I would keep the hope that it is Thou, O Lord, who guidest the current. But certainly if I have sinned sometimes by too great a rigidity, a lack of suppleness and spontaneity, it might well be that now I sin by a contrary excess. I have come to accept peacefully the state in which I am and to say to myself that thou wilt vouchsafe to me the true, the absolute consciousness when thou thinkest fit. I regard all this mobile world as a play which unrolls itself, and I take part in this play with the same energy and conviction as if I believed it to be real and important. All this is quite new. But what is sure is that never were my mind and heart so completely at rest. What will come of it I know not. But I trust to thee, O Lord. Thou knowest best how to use and develop thy instrument. April 28, 1914. Thou art the master of the world. Thy law unrolls itself before us with precision, and as I thought or rather thou hadst made me understand before our departure from Paris, it is the best, that which could best serve thy work in the world, that has happened. In beatitude I have communed with thy power which dominates darkness and error and shines like a marvellous and eternal dawn over the mud of the hypocritical force and its apparent success. All has been brought to light, we have taken a step forward towards the full light of sincerity, and it is this full light which will be the first stage of thy reign upon the earth. O thou, inconceivable splendour, thou, conqueror of all ignorance, victor over all egoism, thou who illuminest our hearts and enlightenest our minds, thou who art knowledge, love and being, let me live constantly in the consciousness of thy unity, let me always conform to thy will. With a respectful and silent devotion I salute thee as the sovereign lord of the world. May 2, 1914. Beyond all human conceptions, even the most marvellous, beyond all human feelings, even the most sublime, beyond the most magnificent aspirations and the purest elands, beyond love, knowledge and the unity of the being, I would enter into a constant communion with thee, O Lord. Free from all trammels, I shall be thyself. It will be thou seeing the world through this body. It will be thou acting in the world through this instrument. In me is the calm serenity of perfect certitude. May 3, 1914. O love divine, knowledge supreme, perfect unity, at each moment of the day I call to thee so that I may be nothing else but only thou. May the instrument serve thee, conscious that it is an instrument, and may my whole consciousness be immersed in thine and contemplate all things with thy divine sight. O Lord, Lord, grant that thy sovereign power may manifest. Grant that thy work may be done and thy servitor solely consecrated to thy service. May the I disappear forever, and the instrument alone live. May 4, 1914. 
To be immersed at once in the end in thy work. To be no longer a limited individual, to become the infinitude of thy forces manifesting through a point. To be delivered from all trammels and all limitations, to rise above all restricting thought, to act and be beyond the act, to act through and for individuals but see only the oneness, the oneness of thy love, thy knowledge and thy being. O my divine master, eternal teacher, soul reality, dissolve all the darkness of this aggregate which thou hast formed for thy service, thy manifestation in the world. Realize in it that supreme consciousness which will generate an identical consciousness everywhere. O, oh, to see no longer the appearances which change incessantly. To contemplate only thy immutable oneness in everything and everywhere. O oh Lord, all my being cries to thee in an irresistible appeal. Wouldst thou not grant that I may become thyself in my integral consciousness, since in fact I am thou and thou art I? May 9, 1914. Just at the moment when I felt the imperious need for the regular resumption of these notes to come out of this invading mental inertia, my physical organism sustained a defeat such as it had not known for several years, and for a few days all the forces of my body failed me. I saw in it a sign that I had made a mistake, that my spiritual energy had given way, that my vision of the all-powerful oneness had been obscured, that an evil suggestion had succeeded in troubling me in some way, and I bowed down before thee, O Lord, my sweet master, with humility, conscious that I was not yet ripe for the perfect identification with thee. Something in this aggregate which constitutes the instrument I can put at thy service is yet obscure and lacking in comprehension. Something does not respond, as it ought, to thy forces, deforms and obscures their manifestations. A great problem presented itself before me and my illness covered it with its veil and prevented me from solving it. Now that I live again in the feeling of thy unity, the problem no longer appears to have any meaning and I do not understand it very well. It seems to me that I have left something far behind me and that I am slowly awaking to a new life. I would wish that it may not be an illusion, and that the profound and smiling peace may return forever. O oh my divine master, my love aspires after thee more intensely than ever. Let me be thy living love in the world and nothing but that. May all egoism, all limitations, all obscurity disappear. May my consciousness be identified with thy consciousness so that thou alone mayst be the will acting through this fragile and transient instrument. O oh my sweet master, with what an ardor my love aspires for thee. Grant that I may be only thy divine love and that in everything this love may awake powerful and victorious. Let me be like an immense mantle of love enveloping the whole earth, penetrating all hearts, murmuring to every ear thy divine message of hope and peace. O oh my divine master, with what an ardor I aspire for thee. Break these chains of darkness and error. Dispel this ignorance, liberate, liberate me, make me see thy light. Break, break these chains. I would understand, and I would be. That is to say, this I must be thy I and there must be only one I in the world. O Lord, grant my prayer, my supplication rises ardently towards thee. May 10, 1914. It is thy sweet joy, O Lord, that fills my heart. It is thy silent peace that reigns over my mind. All is repose, force, concentration, light and serenity. And all that is without limits and without any division. Is it only the earth or the whole world that lives in me, I know not, but it is thou, O Lord, who dwellest in this consciousness and givest life to it. It is thou who seest, thou who knowest, thou who doest. It is thou alone whom I see everywhere, or rather there is no longer any, I, all is one and this oneness, it is thou. Glory to thee, O Lord, Master of the world. Thou shinest in everything. May 12, 1914. More and more it seems to me that we are in one of those periods of activity in which the fruit of past efforts becomes apparent, a period in which we act according to thy law in the measure in which it is the sovereign controller of our being, without having even the leisure to become conscious of the law. 
This morning passing by a rapid experience from depth to depth, I was able, once again, as always, to identify my consciousness with thine and to live no longer in aught but thee. Indeed, it was thou alone that wast living. But immediately thou will pulled my consciousness towards the exterior, towards the work to be done, and thou saidst to me, be the instrument of which I have need, and is not this the last renunciation, to renounce identification with thee, to renounce the sweet and pure joy of no longer distinguishing between thee and me, the joy of knowing at each moment, not only with the intellect but by an integral experience, that thou art the unique reality and that all the rest is but appearance. An illusion. That the exterior being should be the docile instrument which does not even need to be conscious of the will which moves it, is not doubtful. But why must I be almost entirely identified with the instrument and why should not the I be entirely merged in thee and live thy full and absolute consciousness? I ask, but I am not anxious about it. I know that all is according to thy will, and with a pure adoration I trust myself joyously to thy will. I shall be what thou wouldst have me be, O Lord, conscient or inconscient, a simple instrument as is the body or a supreme knowledge as art thou. O oh, the sweet and peaceful joy when one can say that all is good and feel thee at work in the world through all the elements which lend themselves to that transmission. Thou art the sovereign master of all, thou art the inaccessible, the unknowable, the eternal and sublime reality. O oh, marvellous unity, I disappear in thee. May 13, 1914. This somnolence of my thought, O oh Lord, Thou wilt shake off so that I may have knowledge and understand the experience thou hast given to my being. When something in me puts a question to thee, always thou repliest, and when it is necessary that I should know something, thou teachest it to me, either directly or indirectly. I see more and more that all impatient revolt, all haste would be useless. Everything is organized slowly that I may serve thee as I should. What is my place in this service? For a long time past I do not ask. What does it matter? Is it necessary to know whether one is at the centre or on the periphery? Provided that, entirely consecrated to thee, living only for thee and by thee, I do better and better the work thou givest me, all the rest has no importance at all. I would say more, provided thy work is done in the world as well and as completely as it can be, what matters the individual or the group that realises this work? O oh my sweet master, in peace, serenity and equanimity, I give myself and I melt in thee, my thought calm and tranquil, and my heart smiling. Thy work will be done, I know, and thy victory is certain. O oh my sweet master, grant to all the sovereign boon of thy illumination. May 15, 1914. As from a summit which has been attained, one discovers a vast horizon, so, O oh Lord, when one's consciousness is identified with this intermediate realm between thy unity and the manifested world, one participates at once in thy infinitude and the realization of the world. It is as though one were at a center in which the consciousness, wholly steeped in thy effective power, may direct the ray of thy forces upon the lowest instrument moving centrally amidst its brother instruments. From the height of these transcendent regions, the unity of the physical substance is very evidently visible, and yet the body which serves as a particular instrument in the material realm, appears with a special precision and clearness like a more vigorous point in the midst of this whole, at once multiple and unique, in which the forces circulate equally. This perception has not left me since yesterday. It has installed itself as something definitive, and all the outer activity which, in appearance, continues as usual, has taken the mechanical character of a marvellously articulated and animated toy moved from the height of its seat by my consciousness which is no longer individual but is still universal, and that means that it is not yet completely immersed in thy oneness. All the laws of the individual manifestation clearly appeared to me, but in a manner so synthetic, so global, so simultaneous, that it is impossible to express it in our ordinary language. May 16th. 1914. I was interrupted yesterday at the moment when I was trying to formulate the experience I had. And now all seems changed. That precise knowledge, that clairvoyance, 
has given place to a great love for thee, O Lord, which has seized my whole being from the outer organism to the deepest consciousness, and all has prostrated itself at thy feet in an ardent aspiration for a definitive identification with thee, for an absorption in thee. I implored with all the energy of which I was capable. And once more, at the moment when it seemed to me that my consciousness was going to disappear in thine, at the moment when my whole being was nothing but a pure crystal reflecting thy presence, somebody came and interrupted my concentration. Such is, indeed, the symbol of the existence thou givest me as my share, and in which the outer utility, the work for all, holds a much greater place than the supreme realization. All the circumstances of my life seem always to tell me on thy behalf, it is not by the supreme concentration that thou wilt realize oneness, it is by the diffusion in all, may thy will be done, O Lord. Now I clearly understand that union with thee is not an end to be pursued, so far as this present individuality is concerned. It is a fact accomplished long since. And that is why thou seemest to tell me always, do not revel in the ecstatic contemplation of this union, fulfill the mission I have confided to thee on the earth. And the individual work to be pursued simultaneously with the collective work is the awareness and possession of all the activities and all the regions of the being and the definitive establishment of the consciousness in that highest point which will allow at once the prescribed action and a constant communion with thee. The joy of perfect union can come only when what has to be done has been done. We must preach to all, first union, then work. But for those who have realized the union, each moment of their life must be an integral expression of thy will through them. May 17, 1914 O Lord, deliver me from the mental influences which weigh on me, so that, completely free, I may bounce towards thee. O Thou, universal being, supreme unity in perceptible form, by an irresistible aspiration I nestled in thy heart, then I was thy heart itself, and I know that thy heart is no other than the child that plays and creates the worlds. Thou saidst to me, one day thou wilt be my head, but for the moment turn thy look towards the earth, and on the earth now I am the joyful child at play. Such were the two sentences I wrote yesterday by a sort of absolute necessity. The first, as if the power of the prayer would be complete only if it was written on paper. The second, as if the stability of the experience could be secured only when I should have relieved my brain from it by noting it in writing. May 18, 1914. Thou art the sole reality, O Lord, the omnipotence and eternity. And he who unites with thee in the depths of his being, becomes thy reality in its eternal and immutable omnipotence. But for others, the order is, while remaining in contact with thee, to turn their look and their activity towards the earth. Such is the mission thou hast given them. Then begins the difficulty, for all depends upon the perfection of the various states of their being, and they must, even after having attained to the sublime identification, still work for the perfectioning of the instrument which will manifest thy divine will. It is then that the task becomes arduous. All appears to me mediocre, insufficient, neutral, almost inert in the present instrument which thou makest me call, I. And the more I unite with thee, the more I realize the mediocrity of its faculties and its manifestation. Everything in it seems to me to be an almost incorrigible a pu prayers. And if it cannot in any way trouble me, it is because the true, I, is lying at thy feet, or nestled in thy heart, or conscious of thy eternal and immutable consciousness, and regards the whole manifestation with the smile of a patient and understanding kindness. May 19, 1914. This mental being which had, during the whole individual existence, the power of setting all the faculties in motion, deep devotion for thee, infinite compassion for men, ardent aspiration for knowledge, effort towards perfection, seems to be profoundly asleep and no longer to set anything in movement at all. All the individual faculties slumber and the consciousness is not yet awakened in the transcendental states. That is to say, its awakening in them is intermittent, and in between it is sleep. Something in this being aspires for solitude and absolute silence, for a certain time, so that it may come out of this unsatisfactory transition. 
and something else knows that thy will is for this instrument to be consecrated to the service of all, even if that should be apparently harmful to its own perfectioning. Something in this being tells thee, O Lord, I know nothing, I am nothing, I can do nothing, I am in the darkness of inconscience, and something else knows that it is thyself and so is the supreme perfection. What is going to come out of it? How is such a condition to come to an end? Is it inertia, is it true patience, I know not. But without any haste or desire, I lie down at thy feet and wait. May 20th, 1914. From the height of that summit which is identification with thy divine, infinite love, thou hast turned my look towards this complicated body which has to serve thee as an instrument. And thou hast said to me, It is myself, seest thou not that my light shines in it, and in fact I saw thy divine love, clad in intelligence, and then in force, constitute this body in its smallest cells and radiate in it to such a point that it became nothing else than a mass of millions of radiant sparks, which all made it manifest that they were thou. And now all darkness has disappeared, and thou alone livest, in different worlds, under different forms, but with a life identical, immutable and eternal. We must make this divine world of thy immutable domain of pure love and indivisible oneness commune intimately with the divine world of all the other domains, up to the most material where thou art the centre and the very constitution of each atom. To establish a bond of perfect consciousness between all these successive divine worlds is the sole means to live in thee constantly and invariably, accomplishing integrally the mission thou hast confided to the whole being in all its states of consciousness and all its modes of activity. O my sweet master, thou hast rent us under a new veil of my ignorance, and, without leaving my happy place in thy eternal heart, I am at the same time in the imperceptible but infinite heart of each of the atoms which constitute this body. Confirm this complete and perfect consciousness. Let me penetrate into all the details of its perfection, and may I, without leaving thee at any moment, constantly climb up and down this infinite ladder, according to the necessities of the work thou hast prescribed for me. I am thine and in thee, I am thyself, in the fullness of the eternal beatitude. May 21, 1914. Outside all manifestation, in the immutable silence of eternity, I am in thee, O Lord, an unmoving beatitude. In that which, out of thy puissance and marvellous light, forms the centre and reality of the atoms of matter I find thee. Thus without going out of thy presence I can disappear in thy supreme consciousness or see thee in the radiant particles of my being. And for the moment that is the plenitude of thy life and thy illumination. I see thee, I am thyself, and between these two poles my intense love aspires towards thee. May 22, 1914. When we have discerned successively what is real from what is unreal in all the states of being and all the worlds of life, when we have arrived at the perfect and integral certitude of the soul reality, we must turn our gaze from the heights of this supreme consciousness towards the individual aggregate which serves as the immediate instrument of thy manifestation upon earth, and see in it nothing but thee, our sole real existence. Thus each atom of this aggregate will be awakened to receive thy sublime influence. The ignorance and the darkness will disappear not only from the central consciousness of the being but also from its most external mode of expression. It is only by the fulfillment, by the perfection of this labor of transfiguration that there can be manifested the plenitude of thy presence, thy light and thy love. Lord, thou makest me understand this truth ever more clearly. Lead me step by step on that path. My whole being down to its smallest atom aspires for the perfect knowledge of thy presence and a complete union with it. Let every obstacle disappear, let thy divine knowledge replace in every part the darkness of the ignorance. Even as thou hast illumined the central consciousness, the will in the being, enlightened to this outermost substance. And let the whole individuality, from its first origin and essence to its last projection and most material body, be unified in a perfect realization of thy soul reality. Nothing is in the universe but thy life, thy light, thy love. Let everything become resplendent and transfigured by the knowledge of thy truth. Thy divine love floods my being. 
thy supreme light is shining in every cell. All exults because it knows thee and because it is one with thee. May 23, 1914 O Lord, thou of whom I would be constantly conscious and whom I would realize in the smallest cells of my being, thou whom I would know as myself and see manifested in all things, thou who art the sole reality, the sole reason and the sole aim of existence, grant that my love for thee may go on increasing incessantly, so that I may become all love, thy very love, and that being thy love, I may unite integrally with thee. May this love become more and more intense, complete, luminous, powerful. May this love be an irresistible elan towards thee, an invincible means to manifest thee. May all in this being become pure love, profound, disinterested, divine, from the unfathomable depths to the outermost substance. May the God in form who is manifesting in this aggregate, be wholly moulded of thy complete and sublime love, that love which is at once the source and the realization of all knowledge. May the thought be clarified, classified, enlightened, transformed by thy love. May all the forces of my life, solely penetrated and molded by thy love, become irresistible purity and constant energy, power and rectitude. May this intermediary being, weakened, take advantage of its weakness to reconstitute itself with the elements which may be wholly molded of thy love, and may this body, becoming a burning brazier, radiate thy divine, impersonal, sublime and calm love through all its pores. May the brain be reconstituted by thy love. Finally may thy love overflow, inundate, penetrate, transfigure, regenerate, animate everything with the power, splendor, sweetness and force which are its very nature. In thy love is peace, in thy love is joy, in thy love is the sovereign lever of work for thy servitor. Thy love is vaster than the universe and more enduring than the ages. It is infinite and eternal, it is thyself. And it is thyself that I would be and that I am, since such is thy law and such thy will.